Call me, your mobile Verizon rep, at 352-528-0020. All right, 10 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Tuesday morning. I hope you're doing well. We have a guest scheduled to be in. Robin made a phone call to the publicist to uh, kind of rattle his chain a little bit and say, hey, where are you? And he hadn't (laughs) called in. Uh, He is a social media specialist, and he's written a book about how to use social media um, to market things, or market your product, market your services, and a lot of people are using it. A lot of people are using it, and, and the question I have for him, his name is uh, Peter Friedman, and somebody comes on, I want to ask him, um, what are some people doing wrong? Because I think a lot of people are using social media, um, and, and, they, and they're soliciting likes, they, they create these pages, and they want you to like their page, and then they have lots and lots of Likes and I don't really, I don't understand really the connection between that and success, uh, except for the fact that I guess if you have a lot of likes and you post something, then anybody who uses Facebook that is liking your page will see whatever it is you posted. But it doesn't mean people are going to buy whatever it is you're selling. That's the, that's always the key to me. I mean, people have to want whatever it is you're selling. Oh right? yeah. Uh, but uh, that and that's my uh, not, that's not skepticism on my part. I guess that's just you know that's just the but the the real nuts and bolts of of marketing, isn't it? I mean, every anything that's successful, there he is. You can you can guess about what what would cause something to be successful. Yes, I think we, this might be our guest, uh, Peter Friedman, and uh, I will apologize him off the air in advance to tell him that we're going straight to the air without having a moment to chat off the air to uh, kind of introduce ourselves. Peter Friedman, am I right? You're on the phone? I am. Sorry I'm late. I missed it. But well, that, I'm here. That's okay. Well, good morning. Thank you for calling in. And just so you know who we are, we're Robin and Larry. I'm the Larry part. And, and uh, <laughs> well, we were just talking about your book a little bit. I love the topic. Uh, and just to introduce you properly, Peter Friedman is on the phone now. And uh, I kind of the audience sort of kind of knows what you're going to talk about. Uh, the book is called The CMO's social media handbook and i introduced you earlier as a specialist in marketing on the internet and i'm all ears for this but i wanted to tell you a story real quick can i do this certainly this morning in the news now now robin and i are older we're like she's 60 and i'm going to be yes (laughs) but in our younger days we did a lot of music and we sold music the old-fashioned way you know we had you know you had to mail out things and and so there's this young band in the news this morning from our town here, and they have sold 205,000 units. I don't know if that means albums or, or singles, and they do it all through the internet, and they're not, they're not signed to any major label. So assuming they get, you know, I, I know the numbers, so it's usually 69 cents profit per 99 cent single mm-hmm. nowadays. That's what they're making. So they're making sixty nine cents times two hundred five thousand. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're they're driving nice cars. Yes. <laughs> and they, and they did it with the the all the the social network stuff. So Peter, thank you for being on the air to help us with this. I I want to know how they did it. How how you could do it. Well, well, first off, let me say that sixty is a new forty, which means I'm thirty nine. Oh, good. Yay. Good. <laughs> then me too. <laughs> and second, uh, it's a really interesting example of uh, both the internet generally and social media in particular, and the change in media forms. And the first thing we have to understand is in spite of um, many established uh, media structures saying otherwise, uh, all the ways these things have been distributed in the past, uh, you know, record labels, all these types of things, are essentially artificial business models based on constrained physical distribution. And now, internet and social media enables an artist to establish their own following and do exactly what these guys did. I'm not saying everybody can do it, but you have a many-to-many world where people can go out on social media, establish a following, start small, they can get big, they can do it on, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Snapchat, on Instagram, on anything like this, and build up a following that's really interested in what they do and will pay for it without having to use um, physical distribution structures. Now, I'm not saying those structures are bad and they can't add some value, but they really have to add unique value, not just, you know, well, the uh, printing CDs and putting them in stores and things like that. And I, I know this is about more than just selling music, but just forgive me, audience. I want the audience to forgive me for kind of sticking with music just for a second here. Because it's a, there's a niche element that wasn't available once upon a time. We know, we know a world-renowned banjo player. He lives in our area. He's also selling music. There's no way. 
I can't believe that Warner Records or, or CBS Records or any in, back in the 70s would have given a contract to a banjo player. Mm -hmm. And yet the guy can sell hundreds of thousands of copies on the internet because there is a market for him. It's just not big enough to justify it if you were Warner Brothers. Right. Right. That's, that's true, too. And so you can find that, uh, and it, it isn't just music, it, it's any business, um, small businesses or individuals can now have uh, access to global markets, and uh, they can scale up and be personal and social on a global basis. And for some people, that's going to be just mass, mass, mass. For other people, like your banjo player, they're able to reach a fragmented, distributed market in an efficient, coherent way that makes it work. At the same time, the largest companies in the world, the largest label bands in the world, can now be personal and social on a local and individual level if they choose to be. So are the, the small entrepreneurs doing the exact same things as the Coca-Colas? Well, they're, they may not be doing exactly the same way, but they can, on, on, on social media, they can use it to... Um, reach people um, at a global scale, just like a Coca-Cola could. And, and the interesting thing is um, uh, both I mean, the tools are there, the, the principles are there. Any company, any person can do it. Um, I mean, they have to know what to do. That's what my books and our company is, is about to help them. But that doesn't mean they will do it. Um, you know, people that are the individual or the right, small business right. uh, often are intimidated about how am I going to do this, you know, go out and do it in a big way. And large companies, for all their scale and, and, and funds and everything else, have now 60 years of mass marketing, one-way inertia that gets in their way. And it's actually difficult for them to be personal and social on a local basis, even if their company started that way, you know, 50 or 100 or 150 years ago. We, well, we have to take a little break. I'm sorry, Robin. Uh, and, and just hang in there, Peter. I, I kind of want to get into the nitty-gritty of the book uh, and how it can help the, the entrepreneur or the small business person. Um, and I'm guessing the principles work, even if it's a larger business. The CMO's Social Media Handbook is the book we're talking about, a step-by-step -step guide for leading marketing teams in the social media world. This is a topic a lot of people are interested in. Peter Friedman is our guest. He's the author of that book, and we'll be right back with Peter after this. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. More clouds and sun today. There can be a passing shower or thunderstorm, but much of the day rain-free with a high of 82 to 86. And partly cloudy tonight with a low of 65 inland near 70 along the coast. Tomorrow, partly sunny, high 84 to 88. And for Thursday, partly sunny, high 86 to 90. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hey folks, did you know you can sell your mobile home today for fast cash? That's right, you can sell your mobile home today for fast cash. Just call 1 844 Buy My MH today for a cash offer on your mobile home. That's 1 844 Buy My MH today for a cash offer on your mobile home. You can also visit our Fancy Pans website at www.mobilehomecashout.com. That's www.mobilehomecashout.com. We buy ugly mobile homes and the pretty ones. Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. right here on The Source, WOCG. Don't miss planning for a better and safer retirement with your hosts, Francois Cousinet and Julianne Cousinet. They'll be giving you information about your retirement funds and answering your questions with live call-in. So don't miss it Saturdays from 9 a.m. till 10 a.m. Planning for a better and safer retirement right here on The Source, WOCG 96.3 FM, 1370 a.m. This is Maxine Nightingale. Come out and party with me on Saturday, October the 11th at Circle Square Cultural Center. Doors open at 6, show starts at 7 o'clock. It's going to be a party. So get your tickets at Circle Square Cultural Center box office or www.csculturalcenter.com. See you there.
Don't get caught without your daily source of senior deals. Pick up your copy of the Senior Voice newspaper. It's your source for schedule and events tailored to seniors with information you need, like a list of free events in the area. We even have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company to you that fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about them. For more information, call Tom's Picks, 352-804-1223. And pick up your copy of the Seniors Voice at most any business up and down the 200 corridor. Now read Ocala downtown newspaper online. All right, 20 minutes after 10 o'clock, we got 10 minutes to learn a lot of stuff. And if you don't learn it in 10 minutes, then get the book because that's going to help yeah, you out. Yeah, great. P book. Peter Friedman is on in the phone. Peter, I want to tell you something about the computer I use right here. I used it one time to do a story um, uh, about vintage candy uh, for a Halloween party. You could you could get candy that's really not around anymore. Like oh, I don't know, like. What's well, a good example? Those 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 wax whistles or those mm -hmm. wax teeth things like that. Vintage Halloween candy. So I went to this website on this computer. Now I get all these ads for candy on, on this computer. I go into the computer in the in the production room, and uh, Dan, one of the guys who works here, has used it to look up uh, motorcycle parts. And I get all the ads for motorcycles over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's amazing how the computers now know. You know, maybe not with the person who's looking at the computer has purchased in the past, but has looked at on that computer. Yes, well, what they're doing is, um, um, it's called retargeting in, in ad lingo. The minute you um, touch a subject, a site, a subject, an ad, uh, they drop a cookie, and they keep uh, you know, coming back uh, with it to you. And uh, mm -hmm. this is fairly uh, pervasive. Um, it actually has been for a while, but it's more obvious because people are seeing it in their social media streams on Facebook and things like that. And in some ways, it's very helpful. In some ways, you know, it kind of feels like a creepy big brother. But what are you going to do? <laughs> Privacy is over. Get over <laughs> it. Right, right. Uh, sometimes people confuse uh, marketing with advertising, and you do an excellent job keeping the two separate. Uh, yeah, you, um, um, the, you know, advertising is just um, one sort of tactical structure within uh, marketing with, with a big M. And you, what you mean by marketing is how you bring your, your company and what it's all about and, and your customers and kind of the ecosystem around them together in a, an architecture of an experience. And coming back to social media, the, the key thing about it is you have to have experience marketing, not just uh, product message marketing. It's like Apple's really great at this, and I worked at Apple, which um, IBM once famously said that Apple's marketing is a mix of brand and culture. And that's what happens in social media. You're basically creating an experience uh, for your customers that rests on the dialogue and relationship among them. It's very personal and very social, and that way they get to know you and get to know that you understand them. And if you do that, whether you're that band or a small business or a big business, They'll invite you by, by becoming, uh, or reward you rather, by inviting you along and, and giving you more loyalty and paying more attention to you. And, and, and that's how radio stations and print media are. They, they are actually the original social media. Well, I think that uh, radio stations are, are very much so. Any type of a talk show is basically creating an experience by a few people talking, like we are now, and, you know, very, very often bring in the audience, right? And when you bring in the audience, you're actually conducting sort of a virtual conversation, often relating different audience members to other audience members. And so that is quite social. And another way to think about it is think uh, 100 years ago, a general store with chairs on the porch where the customers would gather together, hmm. or a medieval marketplace where a feudal lord um, created a marketplace of social activities to draw uh, commerce booths so people would buy stuff and they could tax it, or the Roman Forum. So the history of business for thousands of years is social and personal. It's only the second half of the 20th century that's the aberrant period that's like going to be a footnote of when everything was like one way. Uh, the Internet and social media brings back the core relationship nature of uh, social media, of, of sales and marketing. Well, that's a pretty interesting way of looking at it. Uh, the book, again, by Peter Friedman is called The CE CMO's Social Media Handbook. Um, so in six minutes' time, let me ask you if you could first tell us what you see people doing wrong. Uh, that somebody's trying to make sure that you show up at their flower show and buy some flowers. Or, or, you know, coming to their, there's usually an event that people are talking about online, and it's a way to kind of get people to come to their place and buy stuff. What, what are we doing wrong? Well, what most people, um, big and small, do wrong in, in social media is they're treating it as just another 
advertising or PR channel where they have their messages all about themselves, about their product, and they shove them through social media at their customers, just like they do on TV or print or something like that. And that's not what the medium is about. Here, what people get out of it is they get to express themselves, they get to have friends, and they get attention. And you have to give them those three benefits for them to pay attention to, at least one of them. And you do that by creating a dialogue and relationship model. Don't talk at people. Uh, Create conversations among them, uh, more about social things and about your product. Think of it as an online party. You're throwing a party for your customers. That's your social media presence. If you went to a party and the host that's the brand, stood up and just talked about himself all night. You go, oh, this is kind of a boring party. I'm yeah. not coming back. Yeah. But if you had interesting people uh, there and interesting topics they were talking about, you got to meet other people, and, and they were fun and stimulating. You go, boy, this brand throws a great party. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to bring my friends. And while we're at it, I'd like to hear what the, the host has to say about himself. So we're so busy wanting to talk about ourselves, our product, our brand, our event that we miss that uh, people want to talk about a lot of other things and you get a lot more people paying attention to you if you talk less about your product and they'll all pay attention to your product messages when you have them. That is interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's a little counterintuitive. By talking less about your product, is, you'll get more people, but it, you and know, then they'll hear your message. But what I've observed is this is the way, like when you see movie stars promoting a movie or recording artists on, on the major talk shows, especially the longer-winded ones like The Tonight Show. Like in the, Matt Lowry's got a little bit of time, but you know, the, the Tonight Show guys and David Letterman and said they, they are longer time. They are usually not talking about what they've done. They show a clip... But they they talk about the dog. They talk about mm-hmm. the, the trip that they took that went bad. And they you know they talk about fun stuff that has nothing at all to do with the product that they're there to pitch. Right. They're personalizing, socializing, the uh, actor, uh, which is uh, essentially the brand, and saying who are you and what you're about and things like that. Yes. And we found we found that um, you know we've been doing this for thirty years and we've done a tremendous number of online you know chat events for movies and things like that. And again, people want to hear a little bit about the movie, but they really want to know what's behind the scenes and what your life is about and who you are. And that makes them uh, kind of more connected with you and more loyal, and they know what it's all about. And for a brand, and again, this could be a small, a small store, the banjo player or the big brand, they want to know who you are. And think about it, if you know learn all about somebody and you kind of know, you know who they are and their vulnerabilities and what they're interested in, they do become your friend. And, you know, who do you want to buy things from? Some corporate faceless brand or Joe and Mary and Fred who turn out to work for that brand. Mm. Now, you know, they're working really hard and they're trying to do interesting things for you. And by buying from them, you sort of know, well, they're, they're looking out for me and I kind of like buying from people I know. That's how people are. How many, how many social medias are there? I mean, there's a Facebook, there's a Twitter, there's an Instagram. Uh, and, and do they each have different demographics? And is that important to us? Yes, well, there are a number of very large, major social networks. So you mentioned some of them, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, uh, Tumblr, um, LinkedIn, Snapchat has grown from nothing in the last couple of years to massive. Uh, that's just in the U.S. Then there are a whole bunch of other ones people in the U.S. don't know about, for example, in China, Renren and, and Weibo, and other ones around the world. But Facebook is the biggest. They're each different. Uh, you have to look at it and say, uh, what am I doing in the context of this channel? Who's here? What are the dynamics? What kind of content fits? How do you want to execute it? Um, they're all social media, but you know, for you have an idea and you have a message you want to do, hopefully more social than yeah. just about my brand, but you don't want to put the same sentence or post up in every single one of these. They're each different, so you have to, uh, just like... You know, you would say something different and do it differently on radio than TV, and even from radio show to radio show or TV to TV show, the ad you might run, you want it to fit the context of the media you're in. You have to do that in social media, too. Plus, when people, since people go across these social networks, they say the exact same sentence as a post from you in all these different channels, they think you're spamming them. Yeah, so people, right, People right. notice that. They yeah. don't mind that. I mean, what you have to do is say, here's this person and I want to reach and engage this person, and I have to know who they are, and that's kind of where it's all heading, kind of more customer-centric. But I also have to uh, sort of treat with them a little differently in each channel, because each one's differently. And there's, uh, this is sort of leading edge, but we're going to see uh, 
brands start cross-programming, they'll be, rather than just be in each channel, hopefully not with the same exact sentence, they're actually interrelating them. So I might reach out to you on Twitter this way and say, go over here on Instagram to see the photos, or over to YouTube this way right. and into Facebook that way. Peter, give us a website because we've got 15 seconds. How do we get more information? Liveworld.com. If you like the book, it's available as an ebook or a hardcover on Amazon, or if you go to the website, liveworld.com, you can download the entire book as a PDF free. All right, thank you, liveworld.com. Thank you, Peter. Thank you so much for having me. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. There will be stepped-up screenings at airports in the fight to keep Ebola from spreading President here. President Obama says beefed-up efforts will focus on identifying and isolating individual travelers infected with the deadly virus. We're also going to be working on protocols uh, uh, to do additional... Uh,